Welcome to the seventh episode of the NRN's EIP Agri Participating Farmer video blog series. This video blog features a farmer who is involved in the Protecting Farmland Pollinators project, along with an introduction to the project from its manager. Hello, my name is Sarah Kavna and I'm the manager of the Protecting Farmland Pollinators EIP. This project is coordinated by the National Biodiversity Data Centre and is an initiative of the All Ireland Pollinator Plan. We're working with a group of 40 farmers to identify small actions that farmers can take on their farm that will help pollinators and wider biodiversity. So there's just over two and a half thousand hectares of farmland involved in the project. The farms are located mainly in Kildare, but we have some in Leash and Wicklow. In consultation with farmers, we have developed a scorecard. There are 18 actions on the scorecard and the farmer will fill in the scorecard each year to identify the quantity and quality of pollinator friendly habitat that they have on their farm. Then the farmer will receive pollinator points each year and the pollinator, point, the pollinator points equate to a monetary reward. So we use a results based payment system. So the higher your pollinator points, the higher your monetary reward. I think one of the reasons for the successes of this project to date is the locally led approach and the communication with the farmers. I believe that that is an invaluable resource. And I would now like to introduce Anthony Mooney, one of our participant farmers. Thank you. Hello there, Anthony Mooney from County Kildare speaking here. I'm a beef farmer. I keep a small herd of suckler cows and I finish cattle on the farm here on grass. And I'm one of 40 farmers from the county participating in the EIP National Pollinator Plan. Now, when I joined the group at first, I tried to take stock of what I knew about pollinators and of their relevance to me and to others. I said, right, I, pollinators are insects, I know that much. Um, they feed on flowers and on plants, and in doing so, they pollinate the plant, which then goes on to produce seeds. I knew pollinators consisted of bees, maybe butterflies, uh, insects called hoverflies, which I didn't know that much about. They looked like bees, but they weren't bees. They didn't sting. And I wondered about moths. I knew there were a lot of moths out there, and were they pollinators? And um, I'd also heard that some of these insects were in trouble, that their numbers were declining and that some of them, some of the bees might disappear altogether. I didn't like to hear that, but I began to think and I said, you know, I'm a grass farmer. Um, I produce grass. That's how I produce beef here in the farm. And I said, as far as I know, grasses don't need insects for pollination. They're actually wind pollinators or they're self-pollinating. In other words, they can do it themselves without the help of insects. So I asked myself, well, if that's the case, what's the relevance of pollinators? I said, are they really necessary? And would it matter if some of those pollinators disappeared and if their numbers were hugely reduced? And anyway, if their numbers are going down, how can I or others help them? What can we do about it? So equipped with a little knowledge, some doubts and a lot of questions, I joined the pollinator group two years ago. It quickly became apparent that there was a lot of knowledge there and a lot of answers to the questions that I was asking. First things were the numbers of pollinators themselves. I had imagined that there might be four or five species of bumblebee, but to my astonishment I found that we have 21. The butterflies, I knew eight or nine of them to see, but there's 33 butterfly species in Ireland. The hoverflies those things that aren't bees but look like them. There was about 180 species of hoverfly in Ireland, all acting as pollinators. And yes, the moths are pollinators. And there was 1,000, and there are 1,500 species of moth in Ireland. The question of a relationship between grasses and pollinators was one of many questions raised, discussed, and answered within the group. The opinion expressed in this case that what was that while grasses mightn't depend on pollinators for pollination, one of the great drivers behind grass production here, the clovers, the legumes, which fix nitrogen from the air and leave it available for the plant, these clovers need pollinators to produce seed. This was one of many points discussed within the group and it was typical of the flow of knowledge that ensued within the group. 
the setting up of a simple phone communication group um, greatly increased the flow of knowledge. It allowed for photos to accompany the questions and the answers. It came to actually helping some of these pollinators that, that might have been in trouble. One of the key things we found was that, like the rest of us, they needed a home to go to. So pollinators' homes can consist of um, many shapes and sizes, one of them being that they will actually drill holes into, into dead wood and uh, quite happily live there and reproduce in there. So this is one of the key things that a person can do. You can get a dead branch, you can drill holes along it and put it in a position uh, facing the rising sun, facing the east. And uh, this one appears to be working quite well. I've just seen what appears to be a solitary bee coming out of it. So there are many things a person can do. You can provide scrapes in the ground that will attract in mining bees. Uh, leaving an old wall uh, with plaster exposed will attract in mining bees as well. Um, leaving your hedges to flower and to bear fruit is of huge benefit to pollinators. They can make their homes in there as well. Uh, these are things that are on an ongoing basis being discussed within the group. The NRN would like to sincerely thank the Protecting Farmland Pollinators Project for providing us with such an interesting and informative insight into how this EIP Agri Operational Group project is working on the ground and making a difference at farm level. Information on Ireland's EIP Agri projects can be found on the NRN website.